Welcome to Postscript from Faithbridge Church. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the message by sitting down with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome back to another Postscript. I'm Justin Teague, the Worship and Communications Pastor here. I'm with Pastor Ken, who just finished preaching the first part of a new three-part series on who Jesus is. Thanks for being here, Pastor Ken. Sure. Fantastic sermon, information packed. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next couple of weeks as you unpack more. Um, first question right out of the chute. The first half of the sermon talked a bit about uh, Jesus Christ uh, the man, the yeah. historical evidence that we have that right. he existed. The second half of the sermon talked about him being God, and, and you great, had the great illustration of, of uh, Mr. Lear getting in the jet mm -hmm. and coming in after mm -hmm. us. Explain to us how uh, he can be both man, human, and God, deity. Yeah, which is so simple to explain. That is one of the great truths of the Christian faith, but it is to some extent a mystery that we'll never be able to articulate because there's no precedent for that. We, we can't liken it to anything else. And so people come up with illustrations. Well, it's kind of like a pie that you cut in three pieces and it all goes together. Or you add in the Holy Spirit and then you you, know, you got three and or this or that. And they, they all fall short. I, I think what we just have to, to to try to keep going back to is wrapping our minds uh, around the concept that I was trying to bring through the illustration of the Lear uh, jet is that ours is a personal God. He's a relational God. And the only way that relationship, that personality could become real to us is for him to become one of us. Yeah. How did he do that down here? And he's still doing that up there. That's one of those great things that we'll get to ask in heaven. But the comfort for us in it is that somehow it's true and that he is full of love and full of grace and he's personal. Hmm. That's helpful. I, I, the other question is back to that Learjet. You then went and talked about uh, God came for us through Christ. And you said the statement, no one else is coming right, for you. Right. Now that's not a politically correct thing to say these days, uh, that <laughs> right. there is this, an exclusivity, yeah, uh, that there's right, almost right. Uh, egomaniacal sure, to say such a sure, thing. Right. Explain I why that's the truth not. Life. No one goes to the Father except by me. Right. Right. Well, sure. And in our PC world, that certainly can come across as exclusivistic. And I think sometimes Christians don't help because sometimes I think Christians almost gloat in the concept. Um, no one goes to the Father except through our Lord Jesus. So, ha ha, you're out of luck which is not the spirit at all. And that's really what I was trying to capture in the illustration at the end, is that that's not what his tone was. Rather, his tone was, I'm just stating a reality. There's only one true God and you're looking at him. I'm the only one who gives life. You can line up all the others, you can read all the books, you can practice, you know, the Eightfold Path and Five Pillars and Ten Commandments and, you know, but I didn't send a map, I just came personally. Hmm. And I am the way. And so he, he I, I think, what I was trying to capture in that is, in the tone of it, is his heart of love for us. And it's just stating a reality. It's not a ha-ha, it's just like, no, this is just the reality. I'm the only one who's coming for you. Nobody else is coming for you. So why don't you choose life? Hmm. That's it's actually hope filled. It's not. Oh yeah. It's not exclusive in, no. in that it's bad thing. Yeah, it's we should be thankful. Hope. Everybody should be thankful. There even is a way. Right. Um, and that was the hope. Great. Well, we've got another information packed two more weeks sure. uh, coming uh, Dan is doing Dan next will do week. next week I'll do the third week 
as we do this and as our grow groups are uh, talking about this, are there any resources you could recommend for further uh, study? Well, sure. I would say the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, go to the red letters, study Jesus, read what he said. Um, and you can't ever go wrong with the Gospels. There are always interesting books that are being written that can, can be helpful. One that I haven't read yet, but my wife has, my father has, they both loved it. And that is about a fella who was a, is a very smart young guy who came out of the uh, Islamic background, a group Muslim, and the book is called Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus. And in it, he, I understand, he talks a, a lot about this friendship that he had with a Christian um, who just journeyed with him. And, and so there's one for coming from a different, sometimes people, especially on a message like this, they're like, I, I wanna know a little bit more about this religion or that religion. That'll get you down the way, as I understand it, on uh, Islam. And, uh, but I'd say get to the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Great. Hey, thank you so much for a great first sermon. Looking forward to hearing the next two. And thank you for joining us for another Postscript. We will see you next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org forward slash postscript.